Hi, everybody. This is Michael Becker, and welcome to this uh, Tinderbox lesson. Um, today with me, we are going to dig into action code and uh, really understand how we can leverage this incredibly powerful capability of tin Tinderbox to help us curate and transform our insights and knowledge. Um, so with me today is Art uh, Kerman, and we've got Bruce Gale as well. So welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much. And maybe you can briefly introduce yourselves uh, just so that we know who you all are. Bruce, starting with you. Well, I'm going first. Okay. Um, hi, Bruce Gale. I'm a clinical psychologist. I'm professionally been in practice for a few decades. And um, my um, continuous quest to master Tinderbox is probably the equivalent for me of what it might have been like to be a ham radio operator back in the 1960s. Um, I enjoy it. I enjoy the learning process. And um, there's simply so many paths to go down. So I'm looking forward to today. Okay. And Art. Excellent. Hi, my name is Art Karim. I'm um, I'm using Tinderbox primarily for writing. I'm a writer and director, but at this point, um, I've sort of um, gotten trapped inside Tinderbox because I think perhaps it's, it's it's the only single software I've been able to find that can accommodate my notes and my way of thinking. Uh, but I'm I'm dealing with this obvious sort of uh, learning jump uh, of trying to understand what action code is and what it can do and how I can uh, streamline my workflow using it. Perfect. So with that in mind, let me set the stage for, I'm going to, I'm going to share my screen a little bit. And I, I'm going to, I'm, what, I'm, what you're seeing here is what I'm calling the four C's of knowledge management, which is right. uh, I think something that's really uh, and particularly useful for Tinderbox. And again, we'll share other videos and, and help people along this. But, you know, when I, when I look at, you know, kind of this knowledge creation process, you know, we've got notes coming in and I call that the collection phase. And then that leads to this curation where you'll create your notes and, Part of that curation phase is both linking notes together, but also adding attributes to those notes, metadata that allows us to have metacognition um, throughout that process. Um, in this curation phase is really where a lot of the action code that will come into play uh, that we'll be talking about today, because this is where you can actually instruct Tinderbox to help you dynamically transform your notes for you, you know, such as move information back and forth between attributes, um, as well as uh, move notes around in your file um, uh, to be able to uh, run searches and queries to help you discover and stumble across your insights and knowledge that you may have had around for year months, years, um, but had completely forgotten about. Um, then once you get into that process, you go into what I call the creation stage, where this is where you're, you're starting to create new insights. You know, it's not just secondary, third, uh, you know, uh, insight and re researchers coming from or, e or your original notes, but you're actually now through the process of mulling around in your data, you're getting those inspired aha notes, which actually lead to more collection because you're not going to generate new notes, you're right. going to generate new original concepts, which then leads to more curation because then that starts mixing and matching and you have this wonderful um, capability there. And then at some point, like anything, once the, once the, uh, that, that creation, curation, and collection process creates a certain enough, uh, enough energy for a particular packet of information, however you want to, uh, um, to uh, consider it, uh, it can get enough gravitational energy to pull itself out of whatever orbit you're, get, you're getting into and become its own thing. And that, so I call that the contribution stage where it spins itself out um, into the world. And then you leverage Tinderbox's ability um, to you know, essentially export your content. Um, you use templates, um, format your content, uh, and really literally, literally transform the output. Uh, and so, uh, what? and again, I'm going to leave us at this because you know, one of the things that I particularly in, uh, enjoy, and maybe Art, you can comment on this as a writer, you know, when I work in say Excel or Microsoft Word or Numbers or Pages, I feel very constrained by the four walls of that output software, right? And, and in fact, the, the, the four walls of an Excel spreadsheet or a, a Word document actually constrain my thinking, whereas Tinderbox and its ability to have this unstructured view allows me to kind of play that multi-dimensional game of chess that Captain Kirk and Spock used to play, right? You can really manipulate your content at multi multiple dimensions. And then when you're ready, you can push it to the output software and literally as, as you need to constrain it to, you know, either the cells of Excel or the slide of a PowerPoint or the walls of Word. Um, and again, I think uh, Tinderbox really uh, affords us to be able to kind of have our cake and eat it too. If we can get over this hump of using 
of using it, uh, of, of learning how to speak to the audience that is the computer, that is Tinderbox, and give it the language that it needs to help us transform, um, transform our, our content. So with that kind of introduction, do you guys agree with that model? Do you want to refine it a little bit? What do you think? Yeah, no, I think I agree. I, I think that's what we were talking about last week during the meetup as well, that, that uh, you know, Tinderbox, because it's so malleable, it sort of allows you to form your own picture or own container uh, in which, uh, so to speak, in which your, uh, your content can be uh, thoroughly well massaged, whereas something like Excel or Word or many of the off-the-shelf packages give you the shape of that container and therefore your your content is uh, invariably molded um, by the limitations of the software. So, and, and that said, of course, you know, there are certain limitations in Tinderbox. There's really no app that does it all for everybody. Um, but I think that, that there's so much more that I can do personally with it uh, that I'm intrigued. And just like Bruce says, it's, it's sort of an adventure, you know, yeah. uh, the discovery process of learning uh, just what you can make the software do for you. Yeah. And I, and I really like that last point that you just made. I mean, Again, Tinderbox doesn't answer every and all question, nor is it ever intended to do, right? It's, it's really perfectly designed for text transformation. Now, you can bring in images through various strategies that we can talk about, but that's really its, its core goal right now. Right. Uh, but yet it sits within a family of other software, you know, where you can use things like DevonThink and Zotero and others. And what's kind of interesting is when people approach Tinderbox, I think it, they see so much potential in it. They expect it to be able to do everything, and they feel a bit let down when it doesn't. But at the same time, we've been so, uh, um, you know, ingrained to accept like the bugs and the problems and the boundaries to which Microsoft puts on, puts on us in Word that, you know, I, it, it's, I find it kind of funny that like we're, we, we're totally accepting of all of these constraints that we have with a, a Word or a PowerPoint or Excel, but yet we're not unwilling to let Tinderbox have those same constraints. Um, and I think that's because Tinderbox actually doesn't it has it puts as minimal constraints as possible on you and and i think that's kind of the rub that's the the, the balance that we're going to look to overcome so the the goal that we're going to have now for the session for those that are listening is we're now going to i'm now going to switch over to art's computer um he's going to share his screen and we're just basically going to have a working session he's going right. to show us some challenges and problems that he's uh, that he's overcoming some objectives that he wants to achieve and we're going to see how successful we are in doing this in real time. So, right. Art, what are we seeing here? I see a, 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 some files. And yeah. um, I'll jump and, into that. And, and you're, I just you're wanted to add a little bit file. to the last point that you were saying that, you know, I think it's something that Mark has mentioned that, that uh, Tinderbox really specializes in emergent structure. And I really do, uh, I do like the idea of that is that I can throw a note, a bunch of notes into it without a structure, and then I can watch the structure emerge. And, and then uh, form, um, make my template or my form around the yeah. actual notes. And again, I hark back to OpenDoc, you know, while we were talking in the meetup. Um, that app many, many years back also afforded me that same sort of concept that I can just throw a bunch of things onto a table and then uh, structure it and then see what, what came out of it. Anyway, so... Uh, I took the I took the liberty of going ahead and sort of setting up a, an initial um, a learning um, environment, and um, so this is a typical example. Actually, for a moment, I'll just jump back into uh, into numbers. Um, so this is lately what my workflow has been. Um, I'm the goal for me is to take notes down as rapidly as I can in any environment at any time. For example, last night, I probably wrote about 800 words lying in bed, just ready to go, just ready to crash out. And suddenly the, the thoughts came. Um, so I use drafts for it because it's probably the most uh, practical and the best syncing um, um, uh, multi-platform app there is. I can run drafts on my iPad, my, my iPhone, my, my MacBook, and they all sync instantly thanks to the glory of iCloud. Uh, sync and they've really done a great implementation on it. So if this is over the course of the last two or three months, these are, these are a bunch of notes I created. Okay, these are all individual notes and, and references and URLs and the like. And I sort of put it into a tabular form. Some of this metadata is, is what drafts chucks out like longitude and latitude of creation. I don't really care about it, but you know, it's there. So I use it. Um, no, and by the way, just as a side note on that, I mean, yeah. again, one of the beautiful things of Tinderbox is, you know, um, as you're generating knowledge like this, you know, mm -hmm. when you're working in output software like Excel, 
Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't have a place to put it, you end up just ignoring it or deleting it or just letting it sit there on the editing floor. Absolutely Whereas right. with Tinderbox, yeah. you can throw it into your tool and then use it later. So what I find when I do my research, you yeah, know, yeah. prior to Tinderbox, I'd like lose 80% of my research effort because mm -hmm. there was no place for me to put it. Where mm -hmm. with Tinderbox, I'm now optimizing 90% of my research efforts because yep. I know I can later go back and do it. So incremental formalization actually happens on multiple dimensions as well. Right. right. You don't need to be formalizing everything at all the times. As you go. On absolutely. That note, right. The point that I wanted to make to you was there's a wonderful element in um, Tinderbox, which I've, I've been wanting to play with lately, which is called um, uh, uh, map adornments. Mm -hmm. so you feed a, a lat long into an, uh, into a, um, uh, we, and we don't need to do it right now, but, right. This, but if you feed a lat long into an adornment, it will actually display a Google map with the notes Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've that. seen that feature. Yeah, right. I, I have seen that feature. It's not really important to me at this point, but it's it's a cool idea, and it's I I just love the way he throws in stuff like that for you to yeah, sort but of. But imagine, but imagine someday too, though. Think about your knowledge. Like, where yeah. are my notes being created, and where were they generated? And might you find down the road that you know, sitting under the tree on such and such park actually right. generated the most significant value for you versus notes in bed versus notes somewhere else yeah so who knows yeah, no, absolutely correct i mean and and to a certain to a certain extent i'm sort of a creature of that very idea i mean i've been in about seven cities in the last six months in spite of covid times you know part of what i'm doing is um, it just so happens that i'm traveling a lot so um but it's cool um so anyhow I just wanted to uh, yeah. show you guys the so here's an outline um view and um for just for practicality's sake, uh, these are all my, my CSVs that I generated. Um, and uh, normally they'd all go into separate projects because each of these CSVs is a, is a separate project. But for practicality's sake, we're just going to toss them all into one project today. So, so say here's my CSV. I drop it into, um, into Tinderbox. I've already created a, a bunch of prototypes. So, you know, it's, it's, it, it's fine. It'll take it. Mm -hmm. um, so as I'm as I'm adding the notes, and then you can see that in my map view that my um, that my actually hold on a second. Let me just get rid of these adornments because they're not necessary. Oh, by the way, here's a tip: if yep. you hold the Option key and drag your mouse, yeah, once you, once you click away, undo that. Oh, let's do it. This is a teaching moment. So yeah, like that, away. right? Yeah, yeah, click away. You can select multiple notes at once. Yeah, I know, but I didn't want to kill the notes because I have like two or three small notes there. Got so it, I'm just trying to it. not. You but know. I have an opportunity to. Yeah, show yeah, I, yeah, absolutely right, and I use it all the time because I'm always deleting shit I put in. Um, so <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so anyway, so so as as we go, um, I'll just continue with some of these. Um, so kaboom, here here go all these notes, right? Um, and they would normally, like, like I said, be normally in, in uh, um, oh, there's a little bug there too, as you see. Um, that's fine. Okay, so those are all the container types. So here's here's a bunch of my of my notes. So I go back into the map view. I've got, um, and I can. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Let's just stop right here, yeah. though. So sure. is each of these, can you open up the CSV file, like one of them? In a moment, yeah. I'm just going to, I'm just going to like make them easy to. But I don't um, actually want to see it in Tinderbox yet. I want to see it as, as the original. Oh, CSV. yeah, yeah, sure. I will. Let's Hold see on. what's in um, one of the CSV files. Yeah. Okay. So let me open it in just a regular. Yeah, just, um, yeah. Numbers or Word or something like that, or Excel, yeah. I actually got a very neat little uh, CSV app from, for a couple of bucks from. Okay. All right. So, okay. That's what I was expecting. So in other words, when you brought in the CSV file, you're essentially going to be creating how many rows are there? Seven or eight notes? Um, yeah, there's, yeah, this one is uh, seven. Um, okay, perfect. So let's go pop, let's pop back over. I just wanted to see what the original, this is, goes back to know your audience. So yeah, sure. to yeah. your audience tinderbox that I want to pull in these seven notes. Yeah. And you can actually see it here on the, um, on the numbers document, which I exposed uh, before, which is just yeah. basically that that you see them, the separate CSVs. I'm not sure whether your screen size, uh, my screen's mm -hmm. laptop one right now. No, I got it. But you get the idea. Yep. Cool. Okay, so anyway, so here are my notes. And and fortunately, because I set up the, the prototype, so now I can get a sense of what um, I have. And then I would use um, attributes and rules and create agents and then be able to sort the stuff out because so let, let's pause right there though so sure. i mean i think this is a huge thing 
Mm -hmm. Uh, So when you say, because I've set up my prototypes now, explain to me how, when you dragged over that CSV, how are you instructing Tinderbox to apply one particular prototype to this CSV versus another one? It's a field. It's a field and a CSV. Okay. So I, again, I, I I just want to want people to see this. So. Oh yeah, of course. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm sorry. To, I didn't intend to sound that right, way. So you've got a field but, called prototype. Yeah, and, and so then, I align it. Yeah. Okay. So. And so when you bring that in, that you're essentially then assigning dynamically that attribute. They uh, inherit the. So that's really correct. good. So one other teaching moment, if if you don't mind, uh, while yeah. we're going through this, um, I noticed all your prototypes. Can you go to your prototypes folder for me, real quick? Uh huh. Okay. Now here's a tip or trick um, that I, I, that I'd highly recommend that you adopt. So Mm -hmm. um, uh, if you were to put a P lowercase P in front of every one of your prototypes, yeah, that's the better strategy because that way uh, the pro you want prototypes to have a unique name. Don't do it right now because you'll break our our demo, but you want to have, you want to have prototypes have a unique name. Yeah. Typically you very well, you very well could have another note called character. Yeah. And you don't want Tinderbox to be confused between, well, do you want the prototype character or do you want the character character? You're absolutely right. And typically what I do is I just do that um, for all my prototypes. So they all have a, a dot. Um, yeah, I'd recommend something like even then though, because dots may mean something, for example, HTML export code, a uh, dot means okay. something in terms of export. Right, okay. So that could, you know, so think about the audience and confusion of the computer and its communication. A right. dot, an asterisk and x uh you know so there are things called special characters like a parenthesis or a bracket those mm-hmm. all mean things to action code so do dots mm-hmm. so if you do a lowercase p that doesn't mean anything to action code that's just a, right. a text right no this is a unicode dot it's like the option no I, I got yeah. it but again you want to you yeah but again you want to think about too um you know especially if you're thinking about when you're creating your notes the unicode mm-hmm. dot may not be as easily to uh, enter when you're on um say dr- uh, drafts mm-hmm. or in some other application but you oh, I, I get the point yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's right. fine okay okay so keep going forward right so in any case so now here we are so i have my um i have my one sec um my notes in and so now i can study and examine them but uh, in the process i'm also losing a few things um and and as an example um let me go let me drill into one or two notes uh in specific so what what i like now with tinderbox is that it immediately uh, uh, pulls up you know most of my key attributes the way i'd import them so i can get a quick look at oh yeah and and let me let me pause there really important step that you've done that other people aren't going to see is when you named the fields, uh, you know, prior to pulling them in. So you right. named the, f- you know, like the field text, you named it you know, a column in, in your CSV file or your right. Excel file, however you name it, TXT. Uh-huh. You, 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 you consciously thought through, I'm going to name this one priority. I'm going to name this one source. Now, mm-hmm. by doing that, or I'm going to name this one prototype. So by doing mm-hmm. that, Tinderbox was smart enough to automatically map those fields because it already knew them and populate those fields. Right. If Tinderbox did not know the field name, it would have made it up. Right. Uh, and it would have generated a new user attribute. Okay, right. so keep going. Okay. Um, yeah, I, that's pretty much it for the first part of what I'm doing, really. Um, I would like a little bit of more ability to parse. Uh, uh, essentially, what I would like, um, let's pull up the numbers document. Um, I, what I would ideally like is to be able to throw a bunch of, uh, uh, of encoded data in, for example, into one of these uh, text fields and then have uh, Tinderbox parse and read so that I can add attributes as I go along. Yep. So uh, um, no, you, absolutely, is... you absolutely couldn't do that. And we can talk about that today or later in another session. Right. What you'll want to do, um, this is where rules, edicts, or stamps come into play. Okay. Uh, and so what you can do is you can write action code, especially you're going to really love what's happening with uh, nine. So right. one of the things that Mark exposed to us in nine, and I don't believe I'm um, disclosing confidential uh, 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 data, if you will, because right. you already did it in a public meetup. But for example, there will, in, in dot nine, there is a new, what's called a dot operator attribute called okay, dot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And right. so what dot following will allow you to be able to do is you could run a rule edict or stamp Mm-hmm. That said, text dot following parentheses mm-hmm. like um, hashtag hashtag. So then you could say you can then code your notes that says 
any code, any text, any line that's following the hashtag hashtag, stick yeah. that into an attribute. Yeah, and that's that, that's typically what I have been doing for a long time. So I, I for example, put the uh, like a date attribute out here. Right, you know? right. So and I started so playing it, with this idea. So in Tinderbox, more. you're going to love Tinderbox 9 because okay, what cool. you're going to be able to do is you're going to run a rule that says, you know, say like a date, like create date or, or, or source date, whatever you want. You know, source date equals mm -hmm. text dot following parentheses, quote, 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 hashtag, hashtag, quote, close parentheses, semicolon. If When you do that and you run a stamp edict or rule against that, it will go through the text, pull the line that has that hashtag in and stick it in the start date attribute. Okay. Only, only the line you mean. So if there's only like the a, one line, the dot oh, following dot great. attribute will, re, will, will process okay. every individual line. That's fantastic. So that's, that's currently an issue. That. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. cool. So that, that will great. totally solve that. You're going to love okay. it. Yeah. Okay. So great. And so in that case, that's, that's half my issues solved right there. And this, this is the other thing with Tinderbox really it has been sort of this adventure, you know, you start yeah. and then, you know, features come in and all of a sudden you go, Oh, I can clamber onto that. Uh, no, and, and on that note, let's pause there. Um, yeah. You know, because this is a piece of artisanal software and not Microsoft, when right. you actually make a request to the developer, you get a response. And sometimes you get a response within the same hour. Yeah. Right? No, um, indeed. It's actually you know, he's, he's truly an amazing gift to the world in that regard. No um, question about it. So well, we're I all think, inhabiting his a little part of his brain right now, essentially. You know? <laughs> so I think what's really powerful and important is the community and the people that are listening to this is don't be afraid to make your request. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you know, just, right. You know, and, and just make it clear and, and understand. And most importantly, express your goal, not necessarily how you want some, mm -hmm. excuse me, not necessarily how you want something done, but what right. you want to have done. You're and absolutely then the community right. will help you with the how. Absolutely right. Um, can we sidebar a bit because I'm at this particular bug which I found. So I'll just throw it at you guys and see what you think. So sure. all these CSV files are, are pretty much identical from what I can tell. Okay. So let me see. Uh, let me take this one. So when I put it in, you'll see it, it generates a, a sort of a container file, which is just the name of the CSV, which is deletable. And then I have now three new notes, right? There's no change to my prototype list. Now, let me take uh, this one particular CSV, which I'm having trouble with. I drop it in. Uh, I immediately see a new prototype, which is just a comma. Yeah. And, uh, and basically a bunch of these sort of container-esque notes, which, which, which means that um, on, on import, uh, these notes have got incorrectly parsed and, and yeah. now they're not even notes. They're just a, they're just a, a mudge. Okay, so let's go back to what we talked about re before. It's not a bug. Okay. It, it is remember it's it's this is the remember your audience right and what you're telling you telling it to do. Sure. Okay. So I would suspect, and again, um, if we go into the text of those notes, yeah, you're going to have one of those special characters that we talked about before. Oh, you're so it's reading have, that special character. It's reading that yeah. special character, which is then breaking its its um, parsing. You know, I thought so too, and I tried that. Essentially, what I did was um, I, I went at least to the to the name and 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 text. Um, um, so let's folders. do an example though. Delete the text column now, or like copy this file, delete the text column. So I did all that. So hold on a sec. So here's my here's my test. I actually not only did I do that, but I also broke down the lines. So let me see where I did the. Okay, so. Right. So you see here, I've replaced the text, the names with AA111 -A and the text with AABBCC, -A right? Mm -hmm. Let me drop this in here. It still messes it up in a different way now. I've got like four new prototypes and I've got only my titles and it's, it's, it's messed up. Now, when it's you say right. four new prototypes, I'm curious, how are you having Tinderbox generate? For, oh, because you're, you're bringing in the attribute name. That's got it. Okay. So open yeah. up the file again. Uh, the, which one? Oh, the test? Hang on. I'm going to put you on pause real quick. Somebody's at my front door. Okay. Interesting little puzzle, isn't it, Bruce? It, it, it really is. Um, it's so funny. Uh, I, um, I, I find that more and more, um, you know, Tinderbox is just kind of my starting project thing. Even if I don't finish up there. Mm -hmm. uh, my, uh, my, my dog's recently... boyfriend came over for a play date. Oh, cool. <laughs> We, we recently, uh, M Michael knew this, we recently published a journal, journal article having to do with social skills. And right. I had everything in Tinderbox. I was, I was working on it and so forth. When it came to actually writing the article, 
I, I don't think I went back to my Tinderbox file once. I right. had every, and, and so it's almost as though kind of um, like Michael's uh, example, it's like my brain got loaded up with Tinderbox information. Hmm. And because I was able to retain it and I now had this organization, I just went ahead and ran because yeah. I found that anything at that point other than just pure writing was interfering if I tried following an outline, if I tried doing anything other than just writing as things were coming into my head, yeah. I was interfering with my own creative processes. Absolutely, getting in your own way. I mean, I, I think like, for example, driving, like not just driving, but driving a car, you know, taking a nice drive and enjoying the car, enjoying the ride, uh, all the sort of the left brain functionality of steering and gear and, and all that, they vanish because it's just you and, and the machinery and the experience. And I like to think uh, that... I like to think that anytime I learn a new feature, I must immediately try to incorporate that into my process and then forget it yeah. because uh, that, that's you, called getting into the, in, into the zone, right? You, you, precisely. Just, you, you just get, you know, yeah. autonomy. all right. So let me tell you what's going on with there. So mm -hmm. I suspect let's go look at your prototype fo folder because oh, cool. it's not, you've got probably got multiple items in that. No, no, no. In, in the CSV file, sorry, the prototype column. Yeah. In the file okay. that's breaking, right? So you let's take the first one that's breaking, like the original one that breaks. Okay. Because I've got three versions of it. I haven't shown you the third version. Yeah. Does so it. let's go down and look cool. at prototypes. Prototype is here. So it's possible. Do you have like an extra tab in there? Nothing. nothing. No, no. That you see. Right. Yeah, yeah nothing. So remember, can... remember. Yeah, yeah, that it's not it's not necessarily visible, so, right? Tinderbox Sorry. can see what you can't, right? So you you know, so one of the do you have BB Edit or a um Yeah, a, of course. I've got everything. Yeah, no, so oh, open up BB uh, Edit. I'll open it with Savita. Um no no no, just open up BB Edit. Just, I don't just, have BB Edit, that's the only one I don't have. I have Savita, which oh, got it. does so, the same so job. So delete all of that. Yeah. Delete all of that. All yeah, delete all that. I just want to. Um, I want to. I want you to. Um, oh, don't don't hit save because I don't want you to. Yeah, yeah. Open up a open up a new file. File new there. Yeah. Now go it. Go to the prototype column and paste that in. Okay. Right. This this particular prototype column. Yeah, paste that in because what we might see. All right. So you know what I like about BB Edit, and I don't know this this text editing tool. Um, but what we're, what we'd be often looking for is is there a um, a hidden tab or a hidden space? Yeah, I'm, I'll just show invisible characters. So okay, no, so that's that's fine. So that's not generating something uh, something of error. But well, go back to, go back to the one that was actually generating multiple. Um, because if you go back to the one, you see where it says um, go back to the one that was generating multiple prototypes. The one which was the AABB, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you want me to open that as well? No, no, put that into the Tinder box. Let me see. Let me see what's right. happening. Because remember, more often than not, I find that yeah. in the end of the day, Tinder box is doing what we're telling it to do. Okay. We well, just, you haven't seen my third one yet, but anyway, I'll. Let's, no, no, let's but no. It. Now look, stop, stop, stop. Yeah. So let's see, God and faith. Right. So what it's and doing is somehow it's interpreting the tags column as the prototypes. Exactly. Uh, the exactly exactly right. Right, and, and also it's messing up the uh, the uh, the actual note because the text has disappeared. Well, it, yes. Um, well, it's somewhere. It's probably hidden in some unknown. No, no, attribute. no. It's just not putting in because you disappeared the text. It's not putting that in anywhere. There is no text. Oh, so it hasn't even pulled the text in. You mean? right? Oh, interesting. Because okay. you don't have a text column. Right. So let me let me show you the the next one, which is basically um, a, a, for some reason uh, from the. Uh, from the numbers file, I just uh, I just copy pasted this um, and created uh, just a duplicate. Um, so there's absolutely no reason why it should do this, but uh, I put this one in. It works perfectly. There's no there's no difference at all. It's just copy and pasted from numbers to another numbers file. I have uh, a I have a timekeeping question. Yep. And be, because Michael has a hard stop at ten. Well, um, I delayed my meeting you... by half an hour because I was having too much fun. I just told them that I'll, I'll be late. Okay. Um, <laughs> so are you, will there be time to make sure that you get to the primary reason on action code that you wanted to have this in the first place? Yeah, we'll get there uh, for sure. Okay. So I think one of the things that we need to look at are, and maybe you could send me those two files because mm -hmm. while you say there's no difference, there clearly right. is. Right, Tinderbox is interpreting a difference. Now we don't know why. So one example could be 
the hyphen one. So is there something in the file name, doing a hyphen one in the file name, is Tinderbox interpreting that as being different? Okay, so let me just do that. And then we could go all day. So, and I don't want to take up your entire day on this, but- um... no, I mean, and I would certainly love to do all day if we could, and eventually we will. But, um, <laughs> but, the, but again, so one of the things you're emphasizing is this process of import and the mm -hmm. consistency. And I think the key learning here is, and now, and that's the A one, and now let's go do B. Perfect. Right? So there's something in the naming of the file that Tinderbox no, they, is getting confused with. No, because the, if you open the numbers file that I generated the test from, it's it's only this. It's basically, it's basically these two CSVs, they're identical. No, I, no, I understand though, but when you just change them, they both work exactly the same way. And the one difference between those two files was the hyphen one and the name. No, no, they, 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 they actually were wrong the same way as they were before. Okay. They, they, they were, I'll show you again. Um, but at least there's consistency now. No, no, it was always consistent. So I have, let's look at it this way. I have three. One was my original anything. Okay. As soon as I drop it in, it gives me the one comma as a prototype and, and it messes up my, my, my notes. Okay. So let's delete that again. Then there's the first test, which is the, um, which is the a, a one BB one, which again messes up, but in a wholly different way. And all I did is basically is take that, copy it and put it into a new numbers uh, file. And I created two CSVs, one of which had a modified note name and text and the other one right. that I left well, as well, original. This is yeah, well, clearly this is something, this, yeah, clearly something's happening there and we just have something to play with those input files. And figure it out. Yeah, probably Mark, but you know, I don't want to waste this time with this stuff. But yeah. this is typically one of the things that's been messing me up. Like I get these little quirkinesses and, you know, like notes watching collapsed under, um, I think, High Sierra and Catalina. And so my entire ingestion process was boned for like six to eight months. I had to come up with new ways of getting data into Tinderbox. Right. And it's well, uh, if you can do me a favor after, after this uh, this lesson, email yeah. me those files and let me let me see what I can debug. Yeah, as yeah. The yeah for sure. Okay, let, now let's move on to uh, Bruce's okay. comment. So okay. that was talking about getting information into Tinderbox. And again, there's clearly a process step that we can we can refine there. Now let's talk about um, manipulating their data. By the way, I really do love how you, I had not thought about doing that before, but passing the prototype name as an attribute in, I think is brilliant. No, oh, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> we just lucked upon it. Okay. So well, like, there's, there's the whole concept of the, of the staging area, because unlike m what I think many people who are working in Tinderbox are doing, I'm sort of depending on this uh, on this number sort of pre ingestion step just so I can overview and see what's going on and you know in a spreadsheet environment it's a lot faster to clean up um, to look oh I missed a cell here you know I should have had a prototype name there or I should put the cre creation date here it's much faster to look at it that way and then bung the whole thing into Tinderbox. Now having said that though this is where um, templates come into play. Mm -hmm. And you can actually do that, or frankly, the attribute browser comes into play. Right, because okay. I don't know if you use much uh, use the attribute browser very much, but using the attribute browser, it can actually give you that ability to triage the values. I do, but it's very. I find it slow for me. I mean, I find it sometimes it has. I have a hard time updating stuff. It's not quite as you know whip around fast as notes view, uh, okay. outline view. So can I show you a, a quick little hack that I do on that one, really quick? Yeah, fine, absolutely. Okay, so go to file. Uh huh. Okay, and go to uh, uh, built-in um, templates. Okay. Click HTML. Okay, now go ahead in there, open up the HTML template. Go ahead and copy that. Mm -hmm. No, no, copy the HTML page. Just copy this Just itself. Copy that and uh, co hit copy paste. Okay, and paste, okay. okay. Now rename HTML to table. Just the word HTML, leave the word page. Oh. Okay, now go ahead and in the code where it says children templates HTML, change the word oh. HTML to uh, change the word HTML to table. Uh, change the next HTML to table. Okay, um, go ahead and um, above text where it says, and know where it says text right there. Yeah. Yeah, hit enter. 
no, no, above it or uh, next to it. Yeah, make uh, make a line break after it. Sorry, yeah. No, now hit carrot table. No, no, the, the side carrot. The oh. yeah. There you go. This way. Other way. Other way. The other direction. Oh, oh bracket. Okay. Okay. Bracket. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now, now close. Now close it. Do the close one. Yep. Okay. If you walk no around, you'll here. find them. They could be in the back room. No, no. They... Under under create a new row under table. Hit uh, now. Type in uh, tr. Oh. Okay. Now create a new uh, and then close and then create a new one and type td. T. Td. V for television. No, for data. Oh, TD. Okay. Okay. And then um, type in uh, name. Okay. No, no, don't do a row. Like that? No, 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 don't do a row. Type in the word. Type the type name. Where after the bracket or yeah, before? after the bracket after the bracket. Okay. Now type closed. Now do that little arrow again. So I should remove the, the one from there. No, 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 no. Okay, no, okay, no. okay, okay. Now back up. This is correct. Delete that, delete that arrow. Delete that one. Delete this one. No, no, no. The arrow. Oh, the last one at the end. Okay. Do the do the one pointing to the left. Uh, and what about it? Okay. Oh, After open it. Oh, okay, okay, like this. Okay. No, no. No, what? Delete that. Okay. No, no. The one you just aired. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Make that one pointing to the right. Okay. Type the word name. Now type the one pointing to the left. Now do the do the backslash. Okay, now type TD, close that. There you go. Okay. okay. Now create a new row. Copy the whole name row and and um okay. All right, and then create another attribute. We'll call it tags, for example. And and so type in the word, change the word name to tags. Okay. Now under the um under where it says um under the children templates line item. Go all the way just above the body tag, hit enter there. Mm -hmm. And um, type the word uh, TR, uh, do the TR, but with a closed bracket. Like this? I mean, I'm closing yep. out the TR? Yep. yep, you're closing out the TR. Okay. And then close out the table. Okay. Okay. So what you're telling essentially Tinderbox to do is on uh, in this template development is you're saying, okay. I want you to um, open up a table. First, uh -huh. give the title of the note. Add in the text, open up a table, give me the column heads of the table, then process all the children, then close the row and close the table. I didn't understand a word of that. So <laughs> sorry, one oh, second. I'll, I'll show you how to make it work in a minute. Now go ahead okay. and open up the H the table page. Yeah. Um, okay. it's open Ironically, I mean, like this. Now, now click on that and change the and where it says HTML item, change yeah. that, change it to table item. Okay, and do the same thing in that child area where it says HTML page and HTML item. Where it um, says HTML page. Oh, change those to table. So okay. essentially, you're, you're again, you're you're instructing Tinderbox what to do, and so it needs to know what paths to follow. Okay, right. Okay. So now delete the text and the title there. Oh, sorry. One second. Delete this. Yep. And the title. And the title, right? Now okay. create another TD series. Now do TD above, no, no, below. above, above that, above that. Okay. And this time type uh, carrot the, uh, uh, above the six. What, uh, the, no, above the, yeah, no, the little carrot, the, the thing above the six, uh, shift six. And do value. Is it caps or? No, a lowercase. Value parenthesis dollar sign name parenthesis and then the little carrot. Okay, and then close out that table. So do the the um, the the TD thing. Nope, keep it right after the carrot. You mean here? Right after the name. No, where it says value. Oh, right. okay. Close the TD out here. Yeah, close the TD. Out. Right. Oh, okay. okay, and put those on the same same row. Put the value up on the same row. There you go. Like this. Yeah. Now copy all of that. Copy that value row. That one. No, not all of it. Just the one. The first line. Okay. Now uh, and paste that as a new line above the children. I'll explain all this once we get it set up. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Now, I'm, now, I'm now change the word. Change the name tag. 
Tags, right? Or tags, right? Now go back to your eight to your table page. Uh-huh. Okay, and let's just make sure I did it right. Okay, so now let now that we have it set up, let me talk you through this. This is go. this is what it takes to set up an HTML. So right. starting at the very top, you're right. telling Tinderbox create a, open create an HTML document for me. Got it. You know, uh, open up the header information of that HTML document. Right. Okay. And so where it says title tag, when you look at a, a browser and you see the, uh, the the name of a tab on a browser, that that row where it says title HTML title, mm -hmm. that that tab is getting that name. Okay. Okay. Then you say uh, close out the header information. Now open up the body. This is the body right. of the HTML page. Right. Now we're saying the first row, the first thing I want to see in the body in the HTML page is a heading one formatting of the title of the note. Mm -hmm. And I want to see the text of the note. Hmm. And then and then I want to, and then I want you to open up a table, create the first row of the table. And mm -hmm. in that first row, I want the column heads to be name and tags. So TR means create row. Yeah. And, it, it, and TD means create a, a table cell. I see. Okay. 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 And then I say, then now I want what I want you to do. As I now want you to, oh, I'm sorry. After the tags, TD tags, mm -hmm. I did make a mistake. Um, you, you, where you have that closed table row, put an error there and close the table row there. Oh, you move this up, you mean yeah. from here? Yeah, no, it's just the, not the table, the row. I'm not trying to understand what you're saying. The TR, table row. Okay, so close it there. Yeah, so put that there. So again, okay. remember how the computer thinks. So what okay. you're asking me to do is create a row. So I'm create opening a row. the row and I want the first column to be name and tags and I want to close the row. Oh, okay, fine. All right. So there'll be no more added to the row there. Okay. Right, no more okay. added to the row. And now, now you're telling Tinderbox, go process the children. Okay. So that's the so table this item. this is the action, basically the action item. The, the right, this is the action item. So let's go back to the table item. Okay. Um, note there. And now, now what we need to do, I'm sorry, is go up and process the row. So um, open up a new row above the first line. So on the very top, the first line to the left, create, open a new row. Yeah. TR. Okay. And before where it says children, close the row. Okay. So essentially now think about what we're telling Tinderbox to do. We're saying, create an HTML page for me. Okay. Pick in the title. Right. Open up a table. You know, create a table. Create right. the first row. Right. Now start processing the children. Right. All right. Under those notes. Okay. And then in each of the children, stick in the attributes, name, and tags. Where are we getting that? That is from the table item. That's from that. Oh, okay. Right. So but each row. And then what? So what Tinderbox is going to do that 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 line where it says children templates page table item. Yeah. What it's going to do is it's going to go through and process every child of that note. Okay. So and, this and basically is saying that that this this particular thing called table item, which is which is this, is now to be processed. Is it's now to be used to process okay. all the children of that note. Right. And where will I find this? It's the child of. Yeah. And, and where do I find this? This child of this. Right. And then when you're done processing processing all my children, close right. the table. Close the table. Close and the then body. close the HTML page. HTML. All right. So now let's go to one of your notes. Okay. Can I stay in this mode in this view? Sure, sure. But yeah, we, I, have, I have no are, notes right now. But we're, no okay, here's a problem I see. Where are all your notes? I deleted them. All right. So yeah, so pull one in. Okay. So let's try. Okay. Right, so you've okay. got a you've got a yeah. note there. And so yeah. Uh, okay. I'm just adding some off a body. Okay. Yeah. Now do me a favor and create a container called notes. Okay. Okay, and stick all of those in there. Okay, now uh, you can just hit tab. Right. Okay. 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 Now, now go up to window, the menu window, and hit show text pane selector. Okay. Yeah. So now, if you click on notes, no, 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 you're oh, good. Notes. Okay. Click on notes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, click on notes. No, okay, just the notes. Okay, oh, you want to see everything. Got okay. it. Okay. So there's all of the notes being processed by, now do me a favor to me, do command one. Okay, okay. and click on the little brackety thing. I, I need to figure out the right names for this stuff. On the on the, on the the inspector, the the ones to the left of the death star. Oh, these, yeah, okay. 
Okay. You see where it says template HTML. Okay. So what you're doing is you're telling uh, Tinderbox, apply the HTML template to this output. And so it's giving you that template. Now go ahead and apply the template that we just created. Okay. So go to templates. No, 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 no. Go to the inspector. Oh, go to this. Oh, change it from here. Oh, I see. Okay. Go to the inspector and the apply that one. Okay. So it's sort of like, it's sort of become a, um, it's, I mean, I can't really. Right now do me. If, yeah, there you go. Now do okay. this, go back to your, Now this is the incremental formalization. Go back to templates. Okay. Go back to templates. Go back to uh, uh, table page. Okay. And in uh, the table where it says table. No, 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 no. Okay. In, in the table tag. Yeah, or, or, or in table. here. Yeah, next to the word, e, next to the letter E, hit a space. Okay. And say border equals. Really? Wow. Okay, a quote one. Oh, I see what you're doing. Quote, okay. Right? So now go back and look at notes. Go click on and, notes. Okay. Uh, and hit preview. Got it. Right. So this so is actually can, telling me on the fly what my what my tags are. Yeah, it's sort of like an attributes view, a direct it's an attributes, attributes view, view, but for preview. Now, 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 here's what's really fun. If you hit file, right, go to file, go to export. Oh no, oh, sorry, okay. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Click on click on notes. Uh, click on notes. Click on notes, and go to file. Export selected note. No, no. Oh, export selected note. Okay. All right. So this is the, the whole the whole freaking note, right? Okay. And now go to like your desktop and just call it notes if you want. Yeah. Hit export. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And hit export. Now go over to that directory and find where wherever my the yeah. And click on it. Yeah, very go. cool. Yeah. So now it's, you just it's great. I, I like the fact that I, I, I actually been able to talk to Tinderbox and it actually did what I asked it, which is it's kind of incredible. <laughs> I, I, at the same time, like it is it is basically outline view. And normally I would survive with 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 an outline view on that. But uh, I've learned something which I'm going to file away in my head. This is great. right. And so but, but essentially the key lesson there is this. Mm -hmm. Once you learn HTML. Mm -hmm. You can produce any output you want. It can be a table. It can be a PowerPoint file. It can be uh, an Excel spreadsheet. It can be a linear long word document. You can have, right. you can format the different headings. So heading two is blue and heading one is, uh, is purple. I, hmm. produ I, I like last night, I published a hundred page document out of Tinderbox. Perfectly formatted, ready right. to go sent to my, sent to my editor. No, I mean, I think again, that's fantastic, and I, I feel at some point I will sort of be ready in that zone. And but for now, because a lot of the work I do is, as I mentioned during the meetup, is is sort of visual and graphic. So um, I don't even have the faintest uh, pathway of of exporting content from Tinderbox. For me, really, literally, like a data and a tag, a cloud, yeah. a fuzzy cloud. But I don't want to ever export from it. Yeah, but even then, though, you can see even by using the templates, yeah. you can use ten, you can use the templating tool. Not even if you even if you never bothered export, it yeah, is another reviews. means of visual semantic management of your notes. Yeah, no, I think it's it's incredible. Like I, I can see you know the potential of where I might use it. So that part is very very cool. Thank you. So let's go back now. So now I, that we've kind of showed, thought, just a question before yeah. you move on, and yeah. you may not address this now, but I noticed that so you've got all of these tags. And you might want to, I imagine, sort it so it's by tag, and then you have all of your comments under humanities, all of your comments under something else. Yeah. Is that is that something that you would potentially want to do with your information? Uh, me or um, yeah, I mean, again, now that art. you are art, like, yeah, would you want to be able to? You can sort and do all of that. You sure. Right. Yeah, I I would not sort them because actually I want them to remain un, as unsorted as possible. Um, so that, but that's just a, a peculiarity. Okay. Of the okay. Work. All right. Yeah. So now let's go back and do this. Now let's play with. Let's go for the the original uh, intention of why we're here today. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let's play with some action code. 
So essentially we've demonstrated how to use some templates. Um, and now let's talk about how might you want to transform these or run some searches on these. Right. Okay. So, so what do you want to do now? What would I create? Okay, typically in my sort of workflow methodology, uh, what I'd be looking at is is now that I have all these all these notes. Uh, one sec, let me just go to my notes. Where did my notes go? It's the one on the bottom, I think. No, that's the uh, templates. Okay. This is supposed to work, right? Uh, oh, maybe they're too far. Yeah. No, that's a frustration I have sometimes finding oh, that some, finding in the map view where you've left things. Yeah, it is true. So um, let's just do this. So I, at least I I see them. I don't know where the heck they are, but let's see. I see them. So now, typically, um, I can show you a quick way to fix that. By the way, but okay, yeah. all right, okay. So there's your so notes. You, you know, so you have these notes, and so what I might want to do is I might go. Okay, so let's create. And typically, I just create an agent, and I go. Um, uh, let me see if, if the tags contain observation. You know, that's a simple one. Um, okay, so immediately let's, let's stop you right there. Okay. So if um, uh, a couple things, one is the operation of what you're doing here. Remember, your your what? How does Tinderbox speak? So what you're saying here is tags equals, um, and that is more of an action code. That's an action. Make right. does you know you know or, or it's a conditional statement. So what you're what you're wanting to do here, and remember tags is a set. So the other thing you need to think okay. about and learn is right. sets so versus contains. lists versus other things. Right. So if you're searching a set, right, right, you need to be searching specific um, uh, items. Like right. you can't right. just search. Does it. tags contain Michael? Right. If the item actually says Michael Becker. So do I do, do do I do that? Do I do a dot operator yeah, there? Yeah, so you do a dot operator. So okay. tags dot format. Okay. And then no, no. Tags, oh, dot tags format. Dot format. Okay. Right. Because what you first want to do, and you, you you actually picked a hard one initially, because you want to convert the set on the fly to a uh, to a string. Oh. So text dot format parenthesis. Okay. okay. Uh, parenthesis. Okay. Quote L. Uh, L. L. Letter L, quote, parenthesis, okay, dot. All right, so now what you're saying is, hey, Tinderbox, first take tags the set and on the fly, just for the time being, format it to a string of, of just rant of text. Ah, okay. okay. All right, and the, L, and the L is what's instructing it to make it a string. If you wanted right. it to convert to another type of type, you'd use a different uh, operator. Yeah. So now what you want to say is dot I contains, Okay, so that's uh, case insensitive. Yeah, and if you did dot contains, it would be case sensitive. Right. Okay, parentheses. Parentheses. Okay, quote. Now, what do you want to look for? Say observation. Actually, I'm not sure if I do have any, but okay. at least I All right, that. and then just hit enter. There you go. Yeah, there we go. So, the, and that's brilliant. And so that's typically what I would do. And then I would work so within no, no, that. Let, let, me, let me pause you there real quick. Click away. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, let me show you this. Now, I, I personally like running agents in list view. Uh, so go, just because it's an affordance that I enjoy. So go ahead and look at this in list view. Okay. And so there's your agent. So, and personally too, I wouldn't include my agent in notes. I'd move that above. So it's yeah. not. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, right. I would. So now, now let me show you something else real quick. Um, sure. So move that out of notes just for, uh, just so I, I, don't, I don't have my own sense of um, ADD going there or what do you call it? OCD. All right. and would I just hit shift tab for that um, to move things in and out? Yeah, yeah, uh, um, yeah. shift tab and it will move it, okay. move it in and out. Now go ahead to your prototypes really quick. Let me show you something really quick. Okay, one second. Okay. okay. Now go to prototypes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, click on any of them. Say observation. Yeah. Hit enter. Okay. Call this agent. P agent. P agent. P. Letter P. Lowercase oh. p. Oh. Okay. Now, um, in P agent, go ahead and open up the uh, the the I know, open up your text field so I can see it. The far right, drag that little dot on the far right. No, no, oh, sorry. no, no, no. Go back to where you were. Yeah. Okay. There you go. And now I click on text. All right. 
Okay. Now click on the display attributes button on the right, that little table thingy. Okay. And type um, query. Oh, query. Okay. okay. And click agent query. And before you do anything, also click agent priority and agent action. No, no. In the list. You see it in the oh, list. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And click agent action. Perfect. Okay. All right. Now, just because it's fun, uh, click on the little uh, plus button to the left of P agent. Uh, the no, no, on the on the in the notes. In your note, the in name. The note. P agent. The, no, over to the left in the in the map view and the text in the outline area. There. Yeah. The click on the oh, little that plus. Button. Okay. 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 All right, and click on symbols. Okay. And scroll up or down or however you do it. There you go. And look for the little carroty things. Scroll up. This one, you mean the carrot? No, no, keep going, keep on. I want to I want to find a different one. Where is it? Uh, I don't see it. I don't see it. Just find something that that con is con uh, looks at agent like put, click click the wrench just for fun. The, bottom the, right. The right, bottom right. All right. Wrench. Email oh, is just okay. mean that's an agent for you. Double click on it. All right. Fine. So there you, there you go. And close that out. So essentially you've created this agent and you can make it a different color or something like that. Got it. Okay. Now go to your note, go to your, um, the notes. Yeah. Okay. And um, now here's a fun thing. No, um, to the little box to the left of agent observation. Mm -hmm. uh, agent observation. Yeah. Okay. Right mouse click on that. Now you can apply a prototype here. So apply P agent. I see. Okay. Okay. So that way you can edit, actually, now you can actually edit your queries and you can change your name of your agents really easily. Right. As opposed to having to open up the window. So if you go in and change the word observation to something else in that agent. Oh, I see. No, no. Now look in the, in the, in your string agent query. See yeah. Tags dot format. Yeah. Change, change the word observation to something else. So. Okay. And then open up the agent. So now it's found everything with realization. So this is just an easier way to manage your and, and work with agents. I see. Okay. I'm, I'm having a hard time. And again, the, the, the obvious question that comes out, like how does one figure all this stuff out? Is there's well, th that's where the Bible that is, or the uh, uh, Quran or whatever, uh, you know, tome you want to, you want to pray to AKA yeah. Mark Anderson's um, TV right. reference file. And mm -hmm. this is where we get into the edge of understanding the language of a computer, mm -hmm. right? This is regex. This is computer language. This is the syntax of a computer. Um, so if you go in and look at the ATB ref file, he will explain these different, um, these different types of, of commands mm -hmm. and instructions, if you will, that you're, you're providing to the computer. I see. Okay. Well, I mean, this is very valuable. I, I still, I, I have to get my head around how I would sort of even understand and remember and realize this. And I guess I'm just going to maintain a, a learn file like this and keep throwing stuff at it. And, uh, and, uh, I, I like what you do, Michael, which is a sort of, um, way of tabulating your, your learnings. I've seen you in, in some of your demo files do that, that, oh, this is this is the reason why I did this, or this is the purpose of this particular document. And that's, it's very, it's a very practical way to go about because who the hell remembers, you know, after two weeks or three weeks or a month, what, what I, and what I was trying to accomplish. Yeah, and, and that's another important thing too, is like, you can put that in the text, like this agent is for that purpose. So you could actually start writing yeah. in that text field, an explanation for yourself there. Um, so that's how you run, that's how you now use agent queries to run a, an action code. Um, so, um, so just so, so, so I uh, sort of get my head around this, basically this is, uh, this is just an agent Yes. Uh, for some reason. Um, what we're doing is we're, we're essentially pulling up the key attributes, um, so that they're visible so that one can just go in and edit out here instead of having to go and open up the correct okay. it just okay. it creates more efficiency in the model now okay. let me show you in, in your context i think you're going to like this even better so mm. click on the display attributes okay um, no no off, off the agent observation off the agent, right okay. okay and do uh uh q type q search 
capital Q, capital S search. Now, one thing you want to teach yourself too is to get used to like creating your own syntax that works for you. Right. So for me, Q means query and then search means the item to which I want to search. Now hit enter. Okay. So it's going to say it doesn't know what Q search now Hit create is, right? okay. and make it a string. Okay. okay, you're fine. Okay, now click away. Now go up and where it says realization in your query, watch this, this is pretty, this is pretty sick. Where it says agent query, yeah. text format, um, delete the, uh, uh, the quote and the word realization. And then type in Q search. Now type in dollar sign Q search. I see, ah, because it's an attribute, okay. Okay. And then do parentheses. Okay. Agent, lowercase, A. Oh. And again, you wouldn't know this. There's no reason why you would know this unless you learned it, right? And then close parentheses. Okay. And then I have another parentheses to close. Right. So okay. now let's watch the syntax, okay? So okay. tags.format. Okay. So format tags as a string. Yeah. I contain. So this is oh. the operator. I want you to search this string that we've just now created. Right. And now what I'm telling you to do is what value do I want you to search on? I want you to go to the attribute Q search to get that value of okay. the agent. Okay. So I can right. put in a value out here essentially. Now type in the word realization. Got it. So I'm not uh, messing with that, with, with the query right. line at so all. So now you don't have to mess with the query anymore. Now you can just, you can play in there. And there we go, updated. Okay. Okay. Now let me show you another little trick that's really super helpful too. So right. um, create another note. Okay. In the notes it. folder? No, 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 no. Create a note. Just hit enter. Yeah, and call this one capital TBX. Capital C, mm -hmm. config, C O N. All caps? Yeah, you, you don't, you have two C's there. Just config, no lowercase. Oh, okay. Do I and need to do one of the C's? And then, and then yeah, lower, right. okay. capital C. And then lowercase um, N oh, note. Sorry. Okay, and lowercase? Yeah, capital N and then note. And again, you want to teach yourself a, 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 a get rid of the space. Oh, okay. Config note. Okay. So right. this is like the config note you guys are talking about. Correct. Is this how right. I do it? This okay. is how you do it. Now go ahead in here uh -huh. and add an attribute called Q search. So how do I do that? Just now type. Go, dis go to displayed attributes. Uh, okay. And type in, dis uh, type in Q search. All right. Now add that right now. Oh, okay. Now in here, uh -huh. type realization, semicolon, observation. No, no. In the attribute. Oh, in there. Okay. Type realization, semicolon, observation, semicolon. What else might you search on? Uh, snippet. Okay. All right. And let's just leave it at that for now. Right. Now, remember, here's an important thing to remember about Tinderbox. Right. Tinderbox, when you're thinking about, and this is a, in, in, an aha and insight that I really got from Keith and our, our, probably one of our first meetings we ever met. What think about the context of a note? What is a note? Mm -hmm. A note is a container that has it's all that has an attribute text and mm -hmm. has an attribute name, mm -hmm. right? And that attribute text and name is contained by the membrane that is a note in Tinderbox. Okay, now every note has the potential of having every attribute, Correct. right? Okay, and when you're looking at these uh, elements, every attribute, Tinderbox can look up the values that are in every attribute, okay? So now with that inside, hit enter. Okay. And by the way, do I, do I leave a semicolon at the end? Or you, don't no? you don't have to, you can, but you don't have to. Okay. I just generally do that. So just housekeeping wise. I, I do too, I do too, I but you don't have to, okay. All right? And then go to, now go to agent observations. Okay. Okay. Now. Click on the Q search little, uh, 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 remember when you were your first unit, click on the little uh, drop down there. Okay, now here's the problem. What do we do wrong? Okay. Um, we parsed the list, but actually this is a list all over again. Yeah, no, but here's what we did wrong. Now hit dollar sign one. And Where? it's not we did wrong. What did I do wrong? But this is a great teaching moment. Hit Where? Dollar Where? Sign one. Where? Or excuse me, command one, command one. Oh. Open up the inspector. Yeah, it's open. 
Go to the to the left of the tinderbox icon, the the document inspector. Uh, That's hold to on. the left. Which is the tinderbox tinder icon? The, this one you mean? Yeah, oh, the tinderbox. Yeah, <laughs> okay. do, do the next one, the one to the left of it, or the right of it. Oh, now. The, the right of it. Okay. All right, this one. Okay. okay. Now you're at user attributes. Yeah. So yeah. go go click user attribute um, Q search. Okay. Now look at its type. We made it a string. Make it a uh, set. A set. Okay. Okay. And I still have to remember what the damn difference is between the okay, list. Okay, now here's the difference. A yeah. set means it's unique. Yeah. A list is you can have duplicates. So a list can have apple, apple, orange, pear. A set will only have apple, orange, pear. It will Got delete it. the duplicate. Got That's it. the only difference. Okay, okay. okay. Unique. So okay. now go and now go back to um, your uh, observation note. Delete that realization um, observation where you, you've got that. Delete that right there. Delete this. Yep. Okay. No, no, uh, no. Double click on it. Double click on it. And delete that text. Okay. Hit enter. Now go ahead and click on the uh, little square bracket thingy. No, no. Uh, under Q search. Okay. Or oh, this. Okay. Click that. This? Yep. So now look, because oh. we converted it to a set, right, right. I made no, them I'm all a set. It. And right. here's the beautiful thing of having that TBX config note. If you want to have universal um, um, you know, variables that you want to be able to pull from, mm. you can put that in the config note, and now that will apply every time you want to use that. Sorry, what? So okay, but the Q search is an attribute that's available to every note. It's available because rem no, every, remember, that's why I reinforce that. Every note has every attribute, whether or not you display it or not. Yeah. So why does it have to be in the TBX config node? I'm not getting that. Yeah, in my you know, here's the issue. Because I want to be able to, let's say you want to have common terms that you're always searching on. Yeah. Right. If you put it in the TBX config note. Yeah. Right. Now go back to agent observation. Right. But you know, you know, now go ahead and go ahead and select there. Now select one of them. Right. Now you don't even have to type. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, yeah, I totally understand that, but I'm just asking, why is it in the TBX config? I'm just, point, I'm just because, pointing because, out because you want to have that like universal list that you want to manage in one place. Yeah, but it's it's the Q search list, right? I'm just, I just let me just, you know, yeah, see yeah, what ahead. I'm understanding. Supposing I delete the config note, right? Okay, yeah. I still have, I still have the list. No, you don't. No, I don't. Why? Because you've deleted the values from that note that was config note. But isn't Q search available to all the nodes? It is, but where are the values? Where's realization? What? Where's the note that had those values? Oh, in it? so you mean the actual set is stored inside the yes, uh, inside yes, that? Yes, the note. actual set is stored inside config note. Oh, I see. Okay, right? that's that, sort of that, weird and makes sense in the same way. Just but that's weird what for my head, but yeah, again, yeah. it will take a while. But that's where that universality yeah. comes from. So. Right. They, Talk about like processing dates. So I always thought that attribute um, that attribute values. Uh, yeah, I guess I, I did not kind of see the the equivalency here. That that essentially an attribute uh, a set has to be within uh, within a note because everything is in a note. Right. Yeah. But again, huh. think about it. So this note, agent observation, has mm -hmm. the unique value of whatever you can and, and go click on agent observation. Mm -hmm. Just, I'm sorry, one sec. Someone keeps pinging me. Just give me a moment. No worries. Don't mind. Okay, sorry, go ahead. So click on agent observation. Right. Right. So, I mean, before we even get into action code, this realization is so critical, right? Click mm -hmm. on agent, uh, agent observation. Okay. Okay. So this note for the attribute Q search has the unique value of observation. Right. Right? The, T okay. the TBX config, that note has the unique values of realization, observation, snippet. Mm. Right? right? When you're looking, now when you go back to agent observation, when you click on that little uh, drop down box on the right, when you click you on that, get, yeah. what Tinderbox is doing is give me all of the unique values of the attribute queue search across all notes. And and does that actually have anything to do with the agent query? No, it doesn't, because that's an altogether different set. 
Yeah, that's uh-huh. a different attribute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. We've created it. So, so under and so, so, so I understand this. Basically, the 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 set for Q search is uh, rests within TBX config note. Uh, however, any other note can pull and and lift one of the members of such set. Um, and yes. you can use it in, in your search efforts. Right. So, so, and effectively okay. what you can do is, and again, here's, here's the really important concept. And this is where this metacognition, this universality of life that becomes tinderbox, not to get overly philosophical, right? But every note has every attribute asso- associated with it. You use prototypes to display those attributes and how you want that note to look, right? It's basically, you know, so you can chase colors and all of that. Um, when you're when you're a, a putting a value of an attribute to that note, like in this case for the agent, we're putting we're giving Q search the value of observation, right? Mm-hmm. What Tinderbox is going to do when you're looking at pulling up that little drop down box that you're displaying right there, it's going to show you the value, uh, the values that every note Q search has, mm. right? So let's go ahead and create another note. Uh, go create another note called sample. Okay, and and for the, because we don't have a prototype for it, show the 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 value of um, Q search. Show Q search, yeah. Okay, now go ahead and sample and type in the word sample. No, no, in the Q search attribute. Oh, in the Q search. Okay. Okay. Now go back to your um, your uh, observation agent. Okay. Click on the little uh, drop down box on the right. 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 Okay, so so basically, okay. and, now, and here's where the UI gets a little tricky. It's right. adding to the list because what you're doing is you're telling it to add to the list. So in the context for the search, you'd want to first delete uh, observation, and then you know, and then click sample, or just delete the observation semicolon, right? And now you're going to just search on the criteria that is sample. Um, and it should, well. There is no attribute sample anywhere, well, so oh, no, no. There, there is, there is no. You have no text in any of your notes that sample. So the query is doing the job right. It's yeah. searching on sample and say, hey, I found nothing. Right, right. I understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But right, so right. essentially, I can keep adding. It's it's so confusing to me. So so the the attribute is one, and I can have like three different notes, and each note contains um, um, some variables in in that forms sort of a set, but no one note. Let's say, let's, say it, let's say it differently. Right. Each note is its own contained atom, if you will. Fine. Right? And Fine. it has its protons and its electrons and all that. And Fine. it has its own, its own. Um, and until you put something into that attribute, it's a stem cell, right? Right. It has right. The, you've, not, you've not given it any instruction. Right. As soon as you add a value into that note, into that into that note's attribute, you've right. given it a value. Right. Right. That value is now visible to all other notes in Tinderbox. It is. Okay. Right. And that's why right. the TBX config note's really fun. Because right. what you can do is you can create like this universal note that is then accessible to everybody else. Correct. So you it. want to create like these default sets or dates or lookups that you want to use or leverage. Right. Right, so that's essential for me because that's that's exactly essential. Right, and I can carry that agent that 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 TBX config node between projects. If I update it, all my lists get updated. Correct. Every time I create a new uh, a new Tinderbox, I copy over my TBX config node. Okay. Okay. So what we've effectively done so far today is you know you we 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 demonstrated how to pull content into a tinderbox file through a cvs file and we've identified some usability issues and some learning issues that we want to consider and address right. um we talked about we learned from you on how to use uh the attribute prototype in the in the cvs file which i think is immensely cool um uh, we've demonstrated how to create templates and using export code to be able to review and demonstrate um the issue Mm-hmm. Uh, or the uh, the items and a, a solution. Um, we've also looked at how to um, apply that export code and that export template. Uh, we've looked at how to generate agents uh, and apply a template to that or a prototype to those agents to make managing and working with agents easier. Mm-hmm. Um, we all one other thing I might want to share with you if you can before I forget. Go to file. 
go to um, prototypes code. Okay, and now do a favor for me on the agent on uh, click command one. Um, go to and, and go click on the P agent. The no P agent P agent prototype. The P agent prototype. I'm not sure where I'm looking. Um, on the list, click the P agent prototype. Your note. Click the note. Oh, P oh here on the note. Oh, click, no, uh, no, click the P agent. So I'm missing what you're actually saying. What the, the, on note, the note P agent? The note the the prototype for P agent. Your list oh, of prototypes. Click. Oh yeah, the P agent prototype. Okay, got okay. it. All right. Now yeah. go back to uh, the little export next to the left of the Death Star, in your inspector. Okay. Um. No. I'm um, doing me a favor. Click on T. Uh. No. Click on the next one over. The one to the left. I need to figure out the names of these so I can remember. Sure. Um. What do I want to do here? Let me think about what I want to do is I'm trying to show you click on the one next to that. This? Yeah. There okay. you go. Uh, click prototype. Yeah. No, no, not the check. Oh, click it, and apply click code. It. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So essentially now if you go back to the agent, the, uh, the, the agent observation notes. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is really important. Uh, and uh, so if you, if you start typing in the text field of that note, mm -hmm. okay. okay. Now, Type a now now type a uh, a quote. Okay. Now you notice it doesn't automatically transform it to a smart quote. Mm -hmm. Make the little quirly quote. It keeps it as okay. a straight quote. By, a code. by applying the code prototype to the agent prototype, effectively what we've now allowed you to do is so if you could copy and paste your query out of agent query, mm -hmm. copy and paste that and then paste it into text. You now can edit your, your agent, your, your action code in this field without worrying about the quotes being tra tra transformed. So it's a lot easier to manipulate and manage your, your, act your, um, your action code in the broader text field. And- Oh, I see what you mean. So that this becomes my sort of my work zone. It becomes your, like your scratch pad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can put multiple, I can yeah, like, you can, yeah, with you can do your scratch pad, you can play whatever. with different versions of your codes. You yeah, can yeah, see yeah. which ones work, which ones don't work. Yeah, yeah, uh, I got know, it. You know, okay. Experiment. And by okay. uh, the key was applying the code prototype to this. Prototype. That way it won't it won't mess with your your quotes. Okay, okay. That's essential to know because that's something you would immediately sort of know inst intuitively, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. Correct. The, so it, even then it drives me crazy. I I make I'll show you more advanced stuff later. Mm -hmm. um, where the, the, the smart quoting, when you want to surgically place uh, export code into your text notes, you've got to remember to always make sure the quotes are straight quotes. Yeah, actually, I still have to understand this whole thing about uh, uh, templates and why why they're loaded uh, voluntarily. Is it just to keep it simpler and keep the yeah, file again, lighter? Again, Mark's Mark's view, and again, I don't I, I don't know Mark. I don't sit in his brain, but you know, having watched the movie Bean, John Malkovich, I can only guess by looking through his eyes. Uh, what the world might like look like, but I I think Mark's approach is, I don't want to make any decisions for you. Hmm, hmm. I'm giving you a tool. Yeah. Right. And it's up to you if you want to be distracted by templates, or if you want to do this, or if you want to do that. Oh, right. It's not right. my job to set you know, and that's why Mark doesn't even like turn on toolbars, right? Because someone, some people don't want to be distracted by toolbars. Very they don't the space. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Right. So his view is like you get to decide. This is a tool for you. You get mm. to do whatever, whatever, with it, whatever you want to mm. facilitate your knowledge creation and to manipulate it and make it work for you. And I think that's something that people have a hard time getting over with because mm. unlike other software, they make they try to make all the decisions for you. Yeah, it's true. It's very true. Right? I mean, so I, I, in fact, nowadays use more and more of, uh, of apps that just don't mess with me. I'm using Task Paper a lot. It's such a useful uh, app because it's right. basically a, a notepad, but it's, it, have you used Task Paper? No. Oh, it's well, well worth it. I, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Um, oh, definitely. Go to taskpaper.com. It's a guy called Jesse Grossgene, and he's been developing for 10, 12, 14 years. Um, it's, it's, it's basically a notepad. But it has markdown capability. So if you, for example, type a line in, and end it with a colon, it'll immediately convert that line into uh, a heading, a project name or heading. Fantastic. And Fantastic. Uh, if you if you start with a hyphen, it turns it into a note. 
things like that. So it's just on the fly and then you can uh, use it as a great outline. It's a very fast outliner. So can I, can I show you one other thing and then we will go. If you can sure. go ahead and go to um, um, uh, notes, click on notes, okay? And click on the displayed attributes, okay? And now type the word type, okay? And hit enter. And now create that and create hit create and make it a set. Okay, now go back to your, um, uh, now go back to your agent uh, and on your agent, um in the action agent action area mm -hmm. type dollar sign type equals quote test type quote semicolon okay now here's the difference you're using the syntax of programming to now say make the for, for every note that gets processed by the agent Mm -hmm. Make make the the attribute type equal to test type. Okay. Okay. Now go look at those notes. Go look at one. Um, you know, and, and and change sample to like realization. Something that. Go find some notes. That's being used, right? Yeah. And get rid of sample. You got to undo. No, no. Oh, oh, yeah, of course. And get rid of the. Ex there you go. Okay. Now let it process. Okay. Now go ahead and click on one of those. And display the word type, the attribute type. There you go. Right. So now this is how you can start transforming your notes. And as we get into more advanced uses of action code, you can string actions together and you can make conditional statements. If the note is this, then do that. If this is that, then do this. Amazing. Amazing. Right, right, right. So so it all sort of winds it. I like that you ended with that because it sort of now it, it all brings it together. Yeah, it's sort of more than I've been able to grok, but now I have to sit with this for like a half an hour, an hour, and just look at it from my my sort of twisted writer's logic and see how it makes sense. But this yeah. is great. This is fantastic. And, and it opens roads, really. It's not an answer to anything. It just opens. So when you guys are talking about something in the meetup on the forums, I actually get why you're saying that. See, if I didn't, I didn't know any of this. I didn't know, exam, for example, why you use a parenthesis or why you would have a period or what... Uh, Right. Um, what the sort of the dot, uh, the dot, uh, what do you call it? The operation dot system. operator. Yeah. yeah so it really, a dot right. operator is just saying dot do this thing. Right. Yeah. Go but when to use the combine and when not to use it and where, what the curly quotes do. It's just, it's, it's a whole sort of, it's, it's a, a glossary. It, it, it's that, a semantic and it's a logic. And we'll get into yeah. that. Maybe if you want to do this again next Friday, we can do part two of this. Yeah, yeah, well, we should definitely think, talk about it. Let's, uh, we're, we're meeting for the meetup tomorrow, right? So yeah, yeah. by that time, I'll have had some thoughts and uh, we'll, let's coll collaborate offline. This could be cool. And we could turn it into something that for, uh, you know, basic um, uh, Tinderbox dummies like me um, could learn something from. Because yep. a lot of times it's that, it's that, that it, you know, we are kiddies and the, the first step is this high. And so you're just kind of trying to reach onto the first step. And then yeah, exactly. Do, it, it exactly. starts becoming All incrementally. Right. So we, we both got to go, and this has been right. terribly fun, and we could continue forever, but let's leave it on this. Uh, our, you know, Thanks so much, we're, Michael. We've learned a ton today, and, um, yeah. and for all of our Tinderbox community members, I hope you too enjoyed watching us, you know, basically grok and, you know, do a, a project in real time and, and, and collaboratively share and learn insights and knowledge about how to use this tool. So Art, thank you very yeah. much for taking the time. No, and, thank you, Michael. Uh, it's, I've learned so much. Okay, looking forward to that. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.